Okay, you're live. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the public safety meeting for Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. Petra, would you call the roll? Ms. Conley. Here. Ms. Johnston. Here. Mr. Tomei. Here. Ms. Byer. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Elder. Ms. McDonald. Ms. Tillerson. Here. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, today's meeting, we're going to basically go through the reports and see if anyone has any news for us. And then guess we'll start with the Sheriff's Department. Ma'am, good morning. How's everybody doing? Very well. And you? I'm doing very well. A um, couple quick things and then one kind of big thing I'd like to talk about. Um, <clears throat> working on a couple speeding complaint areas um, off of Governors between Blue Heron and, and um, Cinder Creek and also off of Green Wing, Wing Teal. That's where we've got our guys kind of concentrating right now with their traffic. Um, also, we had an issue where um, wave runners going through um, Cinder Creek going really fast. Um, right. I've, got, I've got our mean, Marine Patrol working on that. Um, also DNR is going to keep an eye on that as well. Um, it's not, we don't think it's a restricted area, but if they were within 50 feet of a dock, they have to go idle speed. So um, our Marine Patrol is going to be keeping a close eye on that area to make sure we <laughs> people down. Good, because I know one of the residents sent us a uh, video of yes, one of the uh, people going through and they looked like they were going pretty fast. So, Yes, ma'am. We're, we're, um, Lieutenant Maddock from our Marine Patrol has his people work in that area right now. So we're Great. hopefully we can catch whoever's doing it. Great. The, the big thing I want to talk about is, um, and um, Tony and I have been working on this together as well, but since May 25th, there have been nine reports of bicycles being stolen off the island or in, on the island. Okay. And, uh, we're working with, I got the detective office working along with our um, crime scene, our crime out analysis. And um, they're working these cases. We just got a break yesterday. They're working. They found a bike in Hanahan on Facebook Marketplace that was, oh, um, nice. that was stolen off of, um, out of the tennis club villas. So I, I don't know exactly where they are on that, but that's that's a jump off point for them for this investigation for the bikes. Um, that bike was stolen back on October the third. Okay. So our, our analysts are keeping an eye on that as well, trying to look for patterns. I mean, right now they're stealing bikes. It doesn't matter different times of the day. They're taking bikes that are, aren't that aren't locked up, but they're also now right. taking bikes that are locked. So they're cutting locks okay. now. Um, my guys are, are, have been advised on the island, so we're doing what we can to, um, if something doesn't look right, we're, we're going to be approaching some people, but it's kind of difficult. Everybody's got a bike and it's kind of hard to know, you know, well, when I it's guess, not right. I but, guess one of the things we can do is remind people to lock their bikes, because I know most, I would say at least 50% do not. You know, they think, oh, it's fine. I'll just leave it here. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's, that's, that's our big thing right now. Um, hopefully we'll catch a good break with the, with the bike out of Hanahan, and maybe that'll lead us to whoever is doing it. Um, uh -huh. Hopefully we'll be as, as fortunate and maybe we could pick these people up quicker than, than we did the, um, when the furniture, patio furniture was <laughs> taken. So, right. um, but uh, that's that's what we've got right now. We're working hard on that. Did you have a chance to tell the um, sheriffs, the deputies, that uh, they should leave their car in a speeding? Yes, ma'am. I did. And, and, okay. and they're and they're going to start doing that. Yes, ma'am. Great. Thank you. Okay. Is that it? Yes, ma'am. I think that's it. Unless anybody has any questions. Yeah. Just just a comment. Uh, uh, somehow we need to notify. Uh, uh, the property owners that they can register their bikes. Uh, Good point. I can't remember if it's with the town of Kia or, or if it's with Kika, 
Uh, we registered ours some yeah. year. Yeah, sure. yeah I know serial, having the serial numbers when the, when the bikes That's are a good point. is huge. It helps us a great deal if we have a serial number. Do you think we could have uh, in one of our e-blasts, we could put something about bicycles just to alert the public about registering bikes and locking them? We could certainly do that in Kika's side. Okay. Stephanie, can we do that here? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie, you want to have Stephanie coordinate with Leah? Yes, I will. Excellent. Thank you. Uh -huh. Apparently, Johnson did another report this morning over at Windswept for another missing bike today. Wow. Thanks, Yvonne. If I, I'll get that as soon as I can, and I'll pass it on to the, um, the detective that's going to be working it. And the bike was locked on this okay. one, so the lock was cut. So, Lieutenant, that puts us at 10 bikes. The one that was found on Facebook. Correct. That's 10. That's 10 since it's May 25th. Like this. Right. The one on Facebook, was that recovered or just they found it? No, it was sold by the time they, they saw it, but they're going after the person who posted it. Awesome. Thank Good. you. Great job. Thanks, sir. Good work finding that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's move on uh, for our new chief. We bid fine farewell to Chief Walls this weekend. And she's off to Pittsburgh after many years of great service to our island. And I'd like to, again, congratulate Ryan for his promotion and say we look forward to working with you, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, um, thank you, Marianne. I appreciate that very much. And I appreciate uh, what the town did uh, for Chief Walls with the proclamation. Um, that, uh, that really meant a lot to her, and I appreciate yeah. uh, that the town has done to support St. John's Fire District and to support her as chief. And I, I look forward to working with, with everybody um, here today as well, moving in the future. Okay, that said, uh, a couple of things going on here at St. John's with, uh, with the transition um, as well. There's gonna be uh, some promotions and new faces. So we have, um, of course, Chief Stanley still with us and gonna be with us for a while. And then uh, we have two new assistant chief positions um, one is going to be of administration. Um, he is coming from us from the city of Greenville fire as an external candidate. And then um, we also are creating a position of assistant chief of operations. This position will work uh, directly with uh, Chief Stanley and our battalion chiefs. And what this position does is gives us another person, especially during the daytime, uh, to run and be command of incidents um, in our entire district area. So. Oftentimes, some of our battalion chiefs may be on one end of Johns Island or down on Kiowa and Seabrook, and we have an incident go out on the other end, and, you know, the battalion chiefs are coming from our partners. So that position will uh, support that and, and support scheduling and training and a lot of different things, and that is going to be an internal candidate as well, too, and they will be actually starting next, next week, too. So, um, so several new people coming up and so several promotions happening within the department there. So uh, we are still working with uh, Charles County EMS on the unit that will be at our station six. I had some dialogue yesterday with uh, Deputy Chief Wynn of Charleston County EMS and we're working out just a couple things they need uh, logistics wise uh, for that to happen. And uh, Chief Abrams can elaborate on that in, in right. his report a little bit too. So um, we are doing fire hydrants right now. You may see some signs all over Kiowa Island. So we are testing fire hydrants. Um, hopefully we don't have any brown water situations, but if that does happen, um, con contact the, the public utility and um, you'll see our guys out there just flowing hydrants from time to time in the next, uh, throughout October here. So uh, last thing I have on my list is uh, last night at Charleston County Council, they gave us a, a approved um, a budget amendment that we had to purchase a new fireboat. Currently that fireboat sits at the marina. Um, it is it's about 10 years old, a little bit over 10 years and uh, isn't really fitting our needs and cost anymore. So they approved a new fireboat. And also we have included with that money is a whole lot of new equipment as well too. 
So lots of different things in that, and uh, we're happy to have that approved and hopefully get that sometime next year. So that, Very that good. That is my report. Any questions? I did see that um, on Channel 5 News. They talked about the $660,000 grant, and they talked about the request for a fire boat. So. Yeah, so that's yeah. the other thing. We're gonna, we're gonna be starting with here soon as we need to get the grant for the paramedics. I believe that class starts in uh, January uh, for the first, right. first set and then there'll be another set the next year as well too. So yep, that grant and then uh, the fire boat. So, so good things happen. So. That's great. So the, for those of you that don't know, 20 of our um, fire members will be eligible to go to paramedic training as a result of this grant. So we'll have a very well-equipped department. Okay, uh, moving on next to EMS, Chief Abrams, are you, oh, Chief Benton, or Carl uh, Benton, we have, are you? We're both here. Oh, okay, great. We're All actually right. both sitting in the same room. Chief Benton's just on his uh, phone. So Chief Benton's our Deputy Chief of Outreach. Uh, okay. He, he promoted uh, about two months ago. Um, so That's he's gonna right. see in his face a little bit more as well. Good. Um, Welcome. So, uh, the, uh, as far as the um, Station 6 and Governor's Flyway, we are uh, still trying to install or plan to install some charging cables that we need to operate the ambulance so that the, all the equipment uh, stays charged and that the climate control stays running. Uh, so we're working right now between our facilities and St. John's facilities to get that established. And once that occurs, then we'll be able to put a unit out there when it's staffed. And again, that's going to start, that will be an ambulance. It will be uh, offered for overtime units and it won't deplete from the existing uh, permanent unit that's there now at the okay. station 10 uh, on Betsy Harrison. This is just going to facilitate a better response package for, for the POI area. Um, in September, EMS responded to 21 incidences uh, on Kiowa. Uh, 19 of those calls were answered by Medic 35 at the station 10. Two of them were answered, one by Delta 1, because the medic unit was on another call. And we actually, he actually canceled the medic unit because that was a caterpillar stain and the patient didn't want to go to the hospital. Um, and the responding unit was coming from uh, Main Road. Uh, up near uh, Main and Main Bank area. So it was a little further away and it wasn't Medic 35, they were already on the call. And Medic 35 was already on another call um, for another event that took um, 40 minutes to respond. And that's because it was an alpha level call and the patient initially was refused care, didn't want to be uh, treated and then changed their mind. And then, so we sent the medic unit and in between that, that 10 minute delay, uh, there was a chest pain that seemed pretty serious uh, off the island. Um, and the medic unit, we sent the closest medic unit to the higher priority call, which resulted in a 40 minute response to the beach on that other call. But, but 19 out of the 20 um, were with Medic 35 uh, at the location. And um, 14 of those 21 calls we arrived within 15 minutes of the call being dispatched. Um, and the rest of those were under 20 minutes, except for those two that I've already mentioned. Okay. And that's uh, that's a EMS assessment as far as how we performed last month. We're still excited to have Medic 35 out there and uh, work with St. John's on uh, getting any be even better with our response times. Very good. Are there any questions for Chief Abrams? No. Okay, I believe the next thing is Beach Patrol. Thank Hello. you, Chief. So- uh, Hi, Rob. Hey, how are you? Okay. So, so far, um, October is going pretty well. Uh, the leash law is still in effect through the 31st. Uh, as of November 1st, the leash law will change to voice command on the majority of the beach. So, um, I think we're gonna we're gonna be a little more vigilant about um, making sure the dogs are actually under voice command because I know there there have been some issues with that in previous years. Um, aside from that, 
finished the triathlon um, and uh, seems to have been a success, especially on the, on the beach and on our end. Um, uh, the conditions were pretty rough, but, uh, but everybody seemed to, to do okay. And um, we had the same number of swimmers go in the water that we had come out of the water. So that was oh, a win for <laughs> So our USLA, the United States Life Saving Association certification that we have is uh, it expires periodically. And so we're in the application renewal process now. And uh, up until this point, uh, we've always been a, classified as a seasonal agency for their standards. And uh, we now meet their standards for being a full time year round agency. Um, and so that's the application that we've submitted. And if they approve it um, within the next couple of weeks, uh, that will should make us the first uh, first beach north of uh, Daytona, I believe that that and the only beach north of Daytona that has that um, that distinction. So we're excited about that um, opportunity. Uh, other than that, we're starting on the on the code enforcement side with the nighttime stuff. Uh, we have gotten to the point where we've got uh, just a couple of properties that uh, that are starting to see more than one citation. And remember, there's a there's a three citation um, right. uh, cycle in a in a 12 month period that uh, if if there are three convictions, it jeopardizes the the short term rental license on that property. So starting to see a couple of them um, for the first time getting to that that second citation. And uh, I'm not sure if they've uh, actually gone to court. Um, or if they're still pending, but, uh, but we've got at least a handful of properties that have two citations written for them. Um, other than that, just, uh, just keep us in mind with sharing info about the bikes and stuff. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. And our, our guys are out there on patrol on the beach during the day and also, um, after hours. So, um, so we can be a, another set of eyes and another resource for y'all. Um, and along, along with that, uh, when we send out reminders, uh, it would be good to remind everybody that the town does have an ordinance that, uh, requires bikes not stored properly in a multifamily dwelling, right. then they, they either need to be behind an enclosure or inside of a garage. So, um, that's all I have. Rob, do you review the, uh, citations that the code enforcement officers, uh, make? We, we do, you look at, you know, I do see them. Um, I, uh, I guess the, <laughs> I guess the best place they're reviewed, um, would be, would be in the court. So they're all, they're all handled through, um, through, uh, Sherry and her, her department. So, um, I don't really, I don't really have much input, but we do track the statistics. So, um, I'll, I'll be pulling those together, um, in the next couple of days. I think I've got them through, I don't have the, the nighttime stuff in front of me. Um, but we do have it through September and I can get you those numbers. Okay. That'd be great. Uh, the reason I asked is because I was talking to Jan about one that had quite a few citations and they hadn't been, uh, they hadn't lost their license yet, but they were past that point. And I was just wondering if we're enforcing the uh, regulation. Oh, but one of the things I would say is they haven't had, they've had, I think probably two citations, but they've had a lot of warnings. So right. They have to, for the three strikes, they actually have to um, be found guilty. Yeah, so we, so we write the citations. So how does that work, Stephanie? Do you wait till after it goes to court? Well, they can either pay, and if they pay, then they admit guilt, or if they go to court and the judge finds them guilty. Okay. So a little more clarification. We do have, we do have properties that that get a number of warnings and, uh, and we're still trying to be sensitive to, to understanding that, um, Jan's done a really good job about compiling properties that are habitual offenders. And so, um, when we, when we pull those numbers and review them, uh, we look at the address, we look at the dates of the offenses and what the offenses are. If it's the same offense over and over and over again, and it's clear that the property manager is not addressing the issues, um, then, then we are harsher on our, uh, on issuing tickets. Um, during the peak season, when, when there's a lot of, uh, transient activity on the Island, um, if it, if it looks like there was, there was a week where, uh, where we had bikes left out or something, we, uh, we gave them a warning. Like we always do. They're notified by email. And then the next day we check and, uh, and that issue has been resolved. Then we feel that that's, that's pretty effective enforcement given the warning. So, um, while a lot of these properties have very many warnings, um, not all of them are necessary, necessarily 
flagrant offenders. There's so many of them that are, that are just um, a group, a new group comes in for the week. Um, they get notified of the violation because they, they are used to coming out here and not having um, to abide by those rules. Uh, we send the notification and the property manager handles it. And, uh, and so that's, that's kind of a win for us. So. Okay. I know we try and be um, considerate, but we also have to remember the other people in the neighborhood that are following all the rules. So sure. And, and, uh, the, uh, and we, uh, we have identified uh, a couple of properties that are just flagrant violators and, uh, and right. they're, they're getting the, getting the citations appropriately um, assigned great. to them. Okay, great. Uh, that sounds good. Any other questions for Rob? Okay. And next, uh, we'd like to welcome our new prom newly promoted Tony Elder. Congratulations, Tony. I saw Shannon this morning and um, it's, we've got a big shoes to fill. Don't forget to unmute yourself, Tony. But my wife says mute me, but I guess I can unmute you. <laughs> um, thank you for that. Uh, and, and she told me that she met with me today and thank you for the kind words. Um, big shoes to fill. Luckily, she's right next door to me, so I got a lifeline. Um, well, you and uh, Chief Ryan can console each other, you know, when you get to desperate times. We already have. We've already <laughs> talked, <laughs> but not from desperation, but just from congratulations. So okay. uh, congratulations again. Okay, what's going on with Kika? So, really nothing. Um, not really. The, um, you know, we have task force that have been formed. There's a number of them um, that the board uh, formed and formed charters for. The one that really is significant for this group is the safety and enforcement task force type meeting. Uh, that we have, and Stephanie and uh, is, is on it, and then also she brings uh, Beach Patrol and the, uh, any other public safety you know, assets as we talk through different things. Um, probably the most important thing is that we were able to accomplish in our last meeting, um, you know, forming kind of four overarching goals, and one is you know traffic safety management and congestion. Leisure trail safety is another uh, rule slash ordinance enforcement. And then finally, and probably most important is communication and education. So now what we've done is we've uh, been sent home with what I titled homework um, to be able to try to come up with what are the action items, the actionable things that we can put into each one of those categories that the association can be involved in and others. Um, to be able to work on enhancing those, what opportunities are there? What opportunities are there for some quick wins uh, as we dust away the challenges that are associated with each one of them? Where's that sweet spot for the opportunity we can address? Um, the other thing is, so in the next meeting we'll have, which I hope to be at before the end of the month, certainly hopefully before November 8th, which is the key for board meeting, we will establish some actual tasks or actual items uh, inside of each one of those that we can at least begin with. Um, the whole committee is working on that, our task force is. There are a couple of other things that came into that um, where we talked about uh, speed limits uh, on the island in the Kika regulated areas, uh, the private roads. And initially, several years ago, the board asked me to review that and to come up with some recommendations based on just the number of different speed limits that we have and how many times they change. So I came up with that recommendation, reducing those from seven to four. Um, but then as it got finally to the board and we were looking at another challenge that we had, we started looking at line of sights at each of the intersections and most of your public safety and whoever lives on the island can appreciate this or travels it. What are the speed limits relative to the line of sights? Um, and looking back when they were established, they were established when there were just, um, I guess, crate myrtles or what have you, and the line of sight was 500 feet. Um, so we looked at now not only the speed limit based on the construction and what type of neighborhood it's in, but also now looking at the line of sights, which requires us to look at reductions. 
So we're really looking at right now just the, uh, the parkway inside the gate, governor's ocean course area, and then we also were looking at going into the new convention center, Kiowa Beach Drive, and going into Dune Side and over to the Saint Castle, and looking at um, some reductions in speeds, um, which are likely to pass with a recommendation to the board. Um, I'll be putting something out for a formal vote back to me via email on what the work group or task force wants to recommend. Once we do that and the recommendation goes to the board and they tell us what they'd like us to do, the next step is we're going to, you know, obviously communicate this much better than we did last time because we learned our lesson from that. Uh, we've got the ARB to agree to allow us to put things up like flags on the actual change. Um, and I'll be working with the sheriff's office so that we can come up with a reasonable time before the enforcement activities and warnings and all start taking place. So it gives people time to adjust before we just jump right into that because voluntary compliance is always the goal. As part of that speed limit, uh, I'll be ordering this last quarter, the speed trailer that everyone will begin to see around that will actually have uh, the speed displayed. It will actually have uh, collect pictures of the, of the individual's truck or vehicle um, and potentially the person and also their license plate. So that we'll be able to, you know, this, the county cannot have that to enforce anything. It's against the law for them, uh, for enforcement of any kind. But from a standpoint of security approaching them and having conversation with contractors, uh, members, uh, the resort, anyone else, uh, the club, uh, their employees are speeding. So that's kind of where we're at with, with the speeding items. Um, any questions first, I guess, about the goals that were there or that speeding? Because that's a lot of information for our new one. I would ask, what was the most common uh, statement that came from the participants regarding public safety? Regarding public safety or regarding the speed limits? No, the, the, over, the task force we had working on safety. Right. So, so the biggest things, I mean, there were a number of different comments, but obviously congestion at the main gate and then vicariously kind of what's going on at, at the intersection of Kiowa Beach Drive. Um, leisure trails when it comes to, um, you know, actually making contact with the roadway like it does at Kiowa Beach Drive, like it does at the B gate, all of those types of things. Uh, rule enforcement is to try to get into a little bit more enforcement for us. It means getting my patrol officer out, hiring the extra ones that I was given, and then working, you know, cooperatively as we already do with each patrol and uh, the sheriff's office from the enforcement perspective. And then the other one, the top one with that uh, communication and education is to try to figure out how do we get more information about Kiowa rules and, and things like that in the hands of people written in such a way that they actually read it um, and they actually know what's going on and we can hold them accountable for at least an expectation that they should have looked at what we handed them, let's say at the main gate. That's predominantly the, the kind of- Thank you, thank so, you. Um, so the other one is the intersection of flyway and buckle head. We've been working there for a while. I've had speed measurement devices that are mm -hmm. in data. We've done line of sights to compare it to 25 mile an hour standard. And the uh, task force was asked to give a recommendation uh, on where to proceed from there um, because the owner and a few other supporters would like to see a four way stop sign there, um, which uh, we don't, from a security perspective, um, my responsibility is in that role. You know, I don't think that's an adequate thing to do there. I think that it uh, doesn't meet the criteria that's actually established in, in the national and state DOT mm -hmm. regulations. Um, but we're still looking at that to determine if we should do that or if there's other actions that we can take anything from speed homes to reducing flyway speed limit, which consequently could have uh, impact of actually having people take uh, you know, the parkway all the way into the ocean course instead of using flyway as a cut through, which then would also have the effect of stopping the surf song from being used as a cut through. Uh, so there's some benefits there if we can do that um, that we're looking at. 
Any questions about that one? No. I think that's pretty much in a nutshell all that I have in that particular job. I am holding both jobs right now. Um, I will be putting out an advertisement for somebody to replace me in security as a director. Just so y'all will know, I will be looking for someone with law enforcement experience, someone who's in community policing, someone who's had command level experience, that can, uh, has had significant event management and also significant emergency management experience uh, as we go into that position. Great. Okay, are there any questions for Tony? Okay, thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. And yeah. next on to old business, we have nothing under old business, new business. We do have a recommendation for the reappointment of Stephen Rolando as a district commissioner. And I mentioned to Bill earlier that that recommendation did go to the council and was approved yesterday. And now where does it go, Stephanie? Up to the governor's office or? No, it would go to, um, I believe, and, and Bill Tomei can speak on this, but it, we will send that letter. I'll send that letter to Christian at Charleston County. And then it goes to county council has to then um, submit the recommendation to the, to the state, to the governor's office. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So Steve's been very happy as a commissioner, and I'm sure he does a great job. Next for chairman's updates, uh, I really only have one thing I'd like to uh, mention. It's kind of to put closure on the leash law or the leash ordinance discussions that took place this year. No agreement was uh, reached on that, on what should be done and what changes should be made. So as a result, there will not be any changes this year. We will, however, continue to enforce the leash requirements and keep track of those in that enforcement activity to see where the problems lie, if any. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is committee members updates. Yvonne, do you have anything you wanna say? Yes, ma'am. I wanted to thank all of the agencies for their involvement with the triathlon. We had uh, 375 participants come through and, you know, despite some rain and some choppy seas, I think it was one of our most successful. So thank everyone oh, for their involvement with that. That's great, Yvonne. I know CERT helped out too, didn't they? Yes, they did. Good. That's always good. Anything else? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Bill Tomei, do you have anything you'd like to comment on? Or I have no comments. Thank you. Okay, Dwight, <clears throat> do you have any comments? You're muted, Dwight. Dwight. You're still muted, Dwight. I know. I'm not sure what's going on here. Anyway, uh, no comments. Thank you. Thank you, Dwight. Um, let's see. I don't, did, who did I miss? No, Julie's not here. Bonnie's not here. Okay, are there any other con comments for the good of the organization? If not, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second.